Hello and welcome to the Royal Armoury Sleeves. I'm Eleanor Wilkinson Keyes, Assistant Curator, and this is Up in Arms, our new series where we bring you behind the scenes peeks at some of our objects that you may not get to see on display here at the museum. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about this chaffron, which is designed to protect the horse's face. This chaffron is probably Italian and dates from around 1590. In this period, armour for the horse and man was often designed to match, not only to protect and deflect blows from various weapons, but also decorated to showcase status. This piece showcases several different techniques for decoration. We can see here these gold chevron bands diagonally pointing downwards. These are formed of bands holding foliage and flowers with borders and these beautiful scrolled edges. Etching is a technique which uses a waxy substance painted over the surface of the metal and the design is then scratched into that. An acid is applied which bites into the exposed metal and then when it's all removed leaves these beautiful shallow indentations. On this piece, the etched areas have then been gilt using gold, which produces a really lovely contrast against the background. We can also see here embossed stars, which originally would have been silvered. But what's particularly interesting about this chaffron is the background. If we take a closer look, the entire surface has been punched with a tiny stamp. We can see that the stamp is formed of a single row of three holes. But interestingly, rather than punch the holes into the surface, the stamp is designed so that the holes, the circles remain in relief. The effect is that we have a matte surface, perhaps intended to look like textile or to produce a contrast against the gold and silver. This punched area may then have originally been blued or blackened. When we look really closely, we can see just how meticulous this punching is. The tiny stamp, tiny individual stamp, has been stacked one on top of the other in rows, vertical rows, over the whole surface. We can see how the artist has carefully stamped between the etched areas and around the embossing. The surface is also decorated with these copper alloy rivets, some of which retain a rosette type washer. This particular armour, like other horse armours, was made with a matching set. I have here a leg harness and this beautiful cuff for a gauntlet. If we take a closer look at that decoration again, we can see here that not only has the artist had to stamp the, the punched holes one on top of the other, but he's also had to be careful to keep the pressure of the hammer the same. Here we can see a small section where there's been a little bit more pressure applied and it results in just a, a little shadowed area on the surface. Horse armour was designed not just for battle, but also for parades and tournament. This particular example is very fine, and although we don't know who it belonged to, we can speculate that it was somebody wealthy and of noble status. Armours like this were expensive and time consuming to produce, and they would have belonged to the social elite. Events like tournaments and parades would have been fantastic opportunities for individuals to showcase their identity, their status, and their creativity. Whilst they look great on the outside, objects that, like these often tell us a lot just by looking at the inside. So shall we take a look? The inside of armour tells us a lot about the production process and its life. Here we can see the underneath of the embossed stars and if you look closely, hammer marks. We can also see how this was constructed. There are missing plates here that would have protected the cheeks and the ear guards are attached underneath so that the, the top side has a smooth finish. We can see the rolled edges there that have been hammered flat and evidence of earlier leathers throughout the, the object's lifetime. The armour is uncomfortable unless it has a liner. So like armour for the man, the horse armour will also have had a lining inside. This will have been removable to change it as it needed because of wear and tear and sweat, basically the same as armour for the man. 
So by the end of the 16th century, armour is very much used as a status symbol. They're highly decorative, showcasing advanced armour technologies and the whole matching set of horse armour and armour for the knight would have been hugely impressive, whether that be on the battlefield or the tournament field. Imagine having a knight in full harness with this pattern, this design, this poor armour that has had to punch in every single stamp across the entire surface of a bard for horse and man. The background possibly blackened or blued, the decoration gold and silver. I mean, that's impressive, right? A modern day equivalent of an armour like this is something like parading around in a brand new Ferrari or a wardrobe of Gucci handbags or something like that. This is, this is money and status and fashion and technology all rolled into one. The Royal Armouries has a large number of chaperons dating from around 1400 right up until the beginning of the 17th century. Many of these more decorative ones are on display at Leeds and at the Tower of London. So pop along to some of our sites if you want to check those out or more of our amazing objects. If you've enjoyed this video, then please follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the best way you can support us. Do drop me a question in the chat box if you need or leave us a comment. And I'll see you next time.